what is inspiration? This question is as mystic as what is force. The idea is that in this world there are two kinds of particles, material particles and living particles. On material particles, the force is exerted and on the living particles, the conscious particles, knowledge is exerted in the form of inspiration. We will see more about it. So, when a force is exerted on a material particle, it uh, moves, right? It, it does some action. And an inspired living particle, it does not do. It does not know what to do other than fall in awe and reverence. So, therefore, uh, there are certain examples which will these are some of the contents because I have to proceed. For example, this uh, Mozart and Archimedes, how they received the inspiration and how they received this uh, knowledge, it's very well known. Look at this, uh, what Goss is saying. Finally, two days ago, I succeeded not on account of my hard effort, but by the grace of the Lord. As I said, they fall in awe and reverence to the source of inspiration. This is the difference between, an, between a living particle and a material particle. And this is famous point care. He also was inspired. He also received this knowledge when he was just putting his foot in, on a bus. So all these great deserving candidates, they receive this knowledge, this flash of knowledge in one way or another. And they, all of them, they account to a superior, superior person or a superior source of inspiration or superior source of knowledge. Kekulé is also a very famous example. He discovered the structure of benzene. Everyone knows about it. So what is the source of inspiration? Well, all the scientists they have, everyone, every great, every great person who has been inspired like this, they have accounted the hands of a divi divinity. They have accounted the hands of a supreme source of inspiration. But however, there are people who don't very much agree with this. They have got their own uh, mechanistic way of explaining things. Okay, they say that uh, maybe in our mind, in our own body, not self, right? In our own mind, in our own body, in our brain, certain algorithmic calculations or certain machinery is fitted which is giving rise to this flash of knowledge in the form of inspiration. For example, these two, uh, Alan Turing and Russell, they are great proponents of this idea of the mechanistic approach of the, of the, of the mind as a machine. So Turing came up with this uh, Turing machine. Essentially, this Turing machine, what is this Turing machine? Turing machine uh, we have a set of states and uh, we have a problem that can be formulated in the form of this uh, one in zeros or any other uh, symbols in a memory tape. And the CPU, it keeps moving and based on the current value of the argument on the tape, the CPU changes its, its state from one state to another. And there is a set of states. And finally, the CPU, is, it keeps running here and there based on the value of the argument and based on the state. And then finally, the CPU changes its state to a very famous state called as halt state, H-A-L-T. And when the CPU halts, it means CPU has found a solution or the machine has found a solution to the problem. This is Turing machine in a nutshell. And it's, it, it, was a, it was actually proposed as a theoretical machine, but you know what? All the computers today, they are essentially working on this prototype of Turing machine. So a big thanks to Turing, but his approach, the mechanistic, mechanistic approach, this mechanistic approach has some problems, which we now see, now it is see with our present day computers also. The first thing is that this Turing machine, it uh, suffers from a, a severe problem of uh, this thing, that for, for every new problem, we have to construct a new Turing machine, right? Because the memory tape, this thing will be different, the states will be different. So, so therefore, Turing only gave the idea that let there be a universal Turing machine. So in the universal Turing machine, 
the beauty with this is the Turing machine, the former Turing machine will also be supplied as an argument, as a parameter to this universal Turing machine. Not, not just the problem, but the machine can also be formulated in the form of certain symbols. So, he came up with this idea. But there is this problem called as halting problem. Remember the halt state of the Turing machine? The halting problem is the problem that is still troubling all these computer scientists. They say that uh, uh, if I give you a problem, if you give, I will give you a problem, if I give the computer a problem, will it halt on that problem or not? It means will that machine ever reach the halt state? For instance, here we know that this program, it will halt with odd numbers. This program will also uh, terminate but will this program terminate? So, the idea is that the computer, computer should be able to judge whether it will halt or whether it will not halt without any external supplication of intelligence. So, this halting problem is a very, you know, disturbing problem and uh, this is for the small Turing machine. For the bigger Turing machine, this can be translated as the undecidability problem. Undecidability problem means in a finite amount of time, in a finite number of steps, you should be able to decide whether the problem or whether the Turing machine will halt or not halt. If you are, right, if you are not able to uh, find the solution in a given amount of time or in finite steps, right, then your, uh, uh, it is it is called as undecidable. And they have actually proved that halting problem is an undecidable problem. So, halting problem and undecidable problem are the uh, two uh, major drawbacks of this Turing machine. And one thing is that this uh, Turing machine, since it is a set of states and since there are transition from one set to another transition, uh, another state, so there are lots of transition between state to state. So, this will make the TM or Turing machine to be highly deterministic machine. It means there is no place for free will, right. So, this, this is one uh, drawback of this mechanistic approach. So, let us say what Russell talks about, I, I will just skip some slides, come to the important slide. Russell talks about logical atomism. Here I like to have your attention. See, in this world, we know everyone is talking of atoms and molecules and electrons. They say that essentially all the uh, particles can be broken down into atoms and all these things. So, Russell, he said that the no knowledge can also be broken down into logical atoms, you know, atoms. This is called this as, um, it can be true or false or which can be represented as 1 or 0. He actually showed that uh, all the knowledge, whatever we are perceiving through our senses can be broken down into atoms. So, this is called as logical atomism. So, what essentially he was saying that, what essentially Russell was trying to do that this unity of consciousness, what is unity of consciousness? Unity of consciousness means Suppose, uh, if I am hearing some sound and receiving some pain, so I am doing the same thing, the, the two things at the same time, right. There is a unity of consciousness. It is not that I am at, first I will uh, feel the pain and then I will hear the noise. There is a unity of consciousness. So, he was trying, essentially he was trying to do, the, he was trying to splinter this unity of consciousness into these atoms. Russell, he was trying to do that. But this suffered a major failure when his contemporary uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein, he said that actually there is no basement language. Basement language means, well, if I say English, the basement language is the ABCD, right, alphabet of letters and letter is the atom. Similarly, the basement language in this case will mean the alphabet of the atoms of knowledge. 
he actually say, showed that there actually is not possible any basement language, a language from which all other knowledge of the word captured in forms of proposition could be formulated. Okay. Now, so, this slide is a very important slide and few more slides. So, therefore, I will concentrate on these slides only. For example, let us look at this example. Okay. A normal person, let us look at this example. A normal person, if I want to give you orange, he will say, I give you that orange. Actually, this uh, Wittgenstein, he, he used this idea of legal language. He has done a lot of language gaming on this legal language. I will say, I give you that orange, but on the other hand, the lawyer will say, I give you all the singular my estate and interest right title blah 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 and this and I said I am not entitled to blah blah blah. So, there are lots of blah blahs in a legal language. Essentially, he is trying to do the same thing, right. Or shall I give this example? Suppose if I am supposed to walk from here to here, I can just simply walk, right. But the dancer, like yesterday we had the performance, right, they will do all this swirling around, okay, or, or a a jazz dancer he will do chasse or shinetan or this, a ballet dancer he will do pirouettes, a Bharatanatyam dancer he will do tattaravanatada, all these things he will do. Now, you all of you, you do not know about shinetan or chasse, do you? Do you know about pirouettes? You do not know, you do not know. So, idea is what I am trying to say that there is no logic, there is no first order logic algorithmic procedure to get from lower to higher language. It means there is no algorithmic procedure to jump from here to here. There is no uh, clearly defined program to uh, deduce a legal language from a basic language. Okay, he is, this is called as a base, basement language. We can, can we call it as a basement language? So, and but we still learn legal legal language. We still learn dancing. We still learn so many things. Okay. So, it means there is no involvement of any algorithmic thing in the background. This is a very important uh, uh, field which is, which logicians they talk about the basement language and logical atomism. So, this is a glimpse of what I am trying to say there. So, since there is not uh, possible any basement language, so how can we like uh, how can we talk about you know atoms of knowledge? This is the idea. So we saw that uh, the Turing machine also had some drawbacks. Russell's logical atomism have also had some flaws. The connectionism idea is that they consider these neurons, right, to be these logical gates. Logical gates means they can have values of one and zero. So quickly, I'll just jump to the flaws that these people have. Here in uh, connectionist network, uh, these people, uh, the basic problem with this network is or with this connectionism is that their machines or their network of uh, you know neurons or simulation of neuron, it learns instantly. This is what differentiates a uh, network from a brain. brain does not have to learn instantly, I mean necessarily, right. What I am trying to say here that here the connectionist network or the network of simulated neurons is trying to over smarten the human intelligence. Lekin wo over smart karne ki dhun mein it gets defeated because you know it shows its foolishness trying to over smart. And, and second flaw is that it not only tries to tries to over smart, but it is dumb also because every moment it has to depend on this external external hand, external you know programmer. For every pro, pro, for every new problem, there will be a new design. For a, a newer problem, there will be a newer you know newer newer uh, design. And uh, so for that design, it has to develop on that. Uh, external help. So, here this idea is reflected here. And all these connectionist people, people who are neurobiologists, what they essentially are trying to do, they are trying to read and study and somehow simulate the internal mechanism, internal structure of brain. But the external behavioral aspects of the learner, of the human being, 
that is what they always skip right like for instance a person suppose if he learns something or gets inspired and he expresses a joy that is something that they don't cover they are so much into the internal you know complications that the neurons are going through so there are many uh, flaws with connection is but the major flaw is this flaw binding problem binding problem means binding problem says suppose uh, so what these people uh, this neurobiologists say that in our brain there are neurons meant for meant to do different different things okay so there will be a neuron suppose if i uh, show you a blue triangle so the blueness will be perceived by one neuron the triangle will be perceived by another neuron but the binding problem says but okay but finally how do we finally see the blue triangle how does the blueness and the triangleness combine together where is that mechanism mr. so essentially mr sharma now yeah. certain it 5 minutes Please. okay so essentially they are saying that there is this brain department eye department ear department nose department but where is a binding department so this binding problem is also a very uh, intriguing problem this is a problem with uh, uh, these uh, connectionist people point care also uh, suggested something point care said that uh, there is a subliminal self so this is closer closer to godliness he says that there is subliminal self and uh, this subliminal self is responsible for this inspiration and we as the conscious uh, self we are able to grasp that knowledge somehow but later on i don't know why he also ended up choosing the mechanistic approach he said that this subliminal self is creating lots of combinations lots of combination pertaining to one problem and the consciousness self the moment it finds a suitable combination it will pick it up and present it as the uh, or, or uh, convince itself that okay it has got a satisfactory solution so you see in the in the point cures model there is a reciprocation between the subliminal self and the conscious self okay so but here the problem is that the combinations that he is talking about the number of these combinations are are of like uh, they are too too high in numbers for instance just consider this in 1 billionth of a second for a small problem 3.2 into 10 to the power 46 combinations will be produced by subliminal self considering that in every cubic arm strong of brain a new combination is formed okay but this number will definitely increase to even higher number for bigger mathematical proofs because there are certain mathematical uh, proofs you know they have taken volumes of books to be exposed for them you can definitely uh, assume the number of combinations that are going in the brain and the uh, the conscious self is able to pick up just one of it one of the many such uh, combinations this seems to be a very implausible idea so this point cures trial and error method trial error model of uh, this inspiration it suffers this uh, implausibility this is the basic problem the deeper issue is that no basement language and the binding problem no basement language means suppose if i see an object and i sense an object and i try to reduce this all this sensory data all the sensory knowledge into form of some you know basement language or some zeros or ones the idea is that is it possible well uh, ludwig says there is no basement language for this and finally suppose if it is possible then there is this point binding problem how do you address this how do you explain this right so you see all these mechanistic approaches they are still trying to find the solution for both of these so it seems that i have got only few few more slides i'll just complete it it seems that uh, the in all these mechanistic approach they have been treating the person who gets inspired who gets knowledge as the subject of the knowledge right they say that the the person 
is choosing the knowledge or, or what you can is, is behaving as the one who is doing all these things. But then there is something called as uh, this process of choice, they say no, he is not the subject, he is the object. It means the knowledge chooses him rather than him choosing the knowledge, uh, 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 knowledge chooses him. It is relevant in this uh, example of Riemann and uh, uh, Everestad Galois great mathematicians, they have discovered the, discovered the basic fundamental principles of mathematics long, long back and they have still not been proven and uh, all of those principles, they have not been proven and they are, we are still wondering how could they ever perceive such uh, principles. It means it seems like uh, the knowledge has chosen them, you know, this is the basic approach. Finally, uh, Bhagavad Gita answers that actually which means from me comes remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. It means I am that source of basement language, I am that source of Turing machine, no, we will not call it Turing machine, we will call this maybe Paramatma machine, which is fitted inside us. I am the source of remembrance and knowledge and person who are behind these mechanistic approaches and person who are not trying to uh, you know attribute this, attribute me as a source of knowledge, I give them forgetfulness also. So this in uh, essence is the, is a source of knowledge according to Vedic model. In Vedic model, the phenomena of inspiration results from the interaction between the all-pervading absolute being and the localized conscious self, the localized deserving conscious self in the form of inspiration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sushan Sharma. And uh, now it is open for discussion. If anybody has any question, you can please raise. It seems there is no question. It is a lunch time, everybody is asking for something else. So I, I would like to conclude this session with a, a big thank to all the speakers and all the audience for your patience. Thank you very much. I will now request to Professor Chakravarti to kindly present the memento to all the speakers. I now request uh, Professor Sandeep Kumar from Department of Mechanical Engineering IIT BHU to kindly present the memento to our <coughs> to Professor Bhattacharya. No, sorry, Professor Sakurati, sorry. <coughs> 